Hi everyone! <laughs> I'm just waiting for um, some of my friends to come on. Let's see. Give it a couple seconds. <gasps> Hi Amy! <laughs> Hi! Yay, it works! Hey Will! Man, I got a whole crew. This is great. Hope everyone is doing fine on this lovely Thursday. Hey, Simone. Hi, Elise. <laughs> oh, this is so nice. It's like a little reunion. Hi, August. I don't know about you, but I'm very happy it's Thursday because that means tomorrow's Friday and Friday is the best day of the week, in my opinion. All righty. Hey, Steph. Oh, this is fun. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had a really, really fun week so far. So let's see, I'm gonna do a quick roundup. Um, on Monday, we hung with Will, uh, AKA Robert Frost, and he helped us write beautiful poems from the lovely book, I Will Sing Life. Um, who paint, I painted that background so I can promote my work as we, as I promote camp as well. <laughs> um, let's see, Tuesday we hung out with Simone. She made a really tasty um, s'more mug cake, which was slamming and so good. On Wednesday, Wednesday was pretty epic. Um, Julie like pretty much blew everyone out of the water. And uh, hi Mike, um, pretty much blew everyone out of the water and is gonna be the next host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or something like that. Um, yeah, so it's been a really fun week. So I was thinking that, okay, so we've, ri we've written poems, we've baked, we had a lot of fun. We haven't made any art yet, which is, that's like my thing. So what we're gonna do today, hi Julie, is we are going to do a little arts and crafts as well as read a lovely children's book. Um, Cause I love children's books personally, I love, illustrating and painting so I thought it'd be really nice to um, do some art get our art on get some creative juice flowing and then have a little fun while we're at it so just reverse my I'm Bridget I work for Philly Hop um, and we work at Nemours in Delaware which we just started um, Children's Hospital and St. Christopher's Hospital so they're like our three um, main haunts that we kind of hop around and our job as a hop specialist is to bring the spirit of joy to the hospital. So hopefully I will be able to exude that joy through my phone to you in your lovely homes or wherever you are. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So first we're, this is the book that we're gonna be reading. It is called Lottie and Walter. So this book is about a little girl named Lottie who is over, she's overcoming a giant fear. She's afraid to go swimming basically. And she has a fun, uh, she meets a guy, a walrus named Walter who basically helps her overcome her fears. So this story is about bravery. And I know that <clears throat> as hospital outreach specialists, we experience bravery every day with especially the kids in the hospital. So just a quick shout out to all our kiddos who are in the hospital. We love you and we miss you and we hope that um, you get well soon and that this will, you know, you have all the courage and bravery that you need and we'll help you get through it no matter what. Um, so before we start the book, what I want to ask you a question is, was there anything in your life, either at camp or in general, that you had to overcome a fear? Let's see, I'm trying to think. So things at camp that, that were, that showed a great amount of bravery were um, sleeping over. I know that sleeping over at camp is really scary a lot because a lot of times kids can be homesick. So it's the first time away from the family. Um, sleeping in the cabins can be a little spooky because it's dark and you're in the woods. You don't know what's out there. Weepy could be in the trees. You never know. Um, hopefully there are no bugs. Um, oh, I know this is like another really cool thing. I have, I have had so many campers 
who have done the swim test at camp. So if you've never been to camp, in order to go swimming in the deep end, um, you have to do the swim test. So when you do the swim test, you have to swim back and forth like a full lap and then you have to tread water for a minute, which is super tiring. And then when you're done, you get a really cool bracelet, um, but it's hard and I've met so many kids who, you know, the deep end's pretty scary. Um, they have gone in there, did their swim tests, conquered their fear, and they came out stronger. So that's an example of bravery at camp. Um, I've met tons of kids who, campers, who are afraid of heights. And so when you're older camper, you get to climb this uh, rock tower and then there's this really cool zip line um, that go, I mean, it's super high. I don't know how high you're, you could check the fact book or something. It's very high, but they go really fast. And so many kids who climb it, um, they're so happy when they're done and they're happy they did it and they've conquered another fear. So it just goes to show that you can do whatever you set your mind to. Um, so, was there anything that you guys have done to overcome your fear? Hi, Carly. Like, uh, hmm. Driving? If you're learning how to drive, that can be scary. Or riding a bike is a little scary. Um, <laughs> riding a bike is always a little scary. How about if you've never been to camp? Has there anything that you've kind of do really brave? Well, I know that riding a bike is really scary. Like learning how to do new things is really scary. Swimming in the deep end. All that kind of jazz. All right, so while you guys are thinking about that, I am gonna start doing Facebook Live. Yes, I'm, I was sweating a lot before this. You know, I'm gonna be honest and real with you. I was very nervous to do this. So anyone who does something new. <laughs> Frankie, hi Frankie. Afraid to dive in the pool. Yeah, diving is a little, diving can be scary teaching Bailey Horton how to drive. True that, I'm assuming Dawn, you're Bailey's mother. Yeah, my mom pretty much refused to teach me how to drive after I uh, ran up on the curb. <laughs> uh, she threw in the town and forced me to get driving lessons. So that's pretty scary. Yeah, and you do need friends to conquer your fears. That's true. Navigating a big city, Morgan. Oh, that makes sense. You're in like the big New York. That's like the biggest city ever. New York is very intimidating, especially the subway. <laughs> All right. Wow, there's a lot teaching Rob to drive. Hmm. Somehow, Mrs. Crothers, I believe that. All right, so it sounds like you guys are a brave bunch. Sounds like I'm dealing with a very brave crew. Uh-oh, I see a lot of angry faces for some reason. I don't know if that's from... I don't know who that's from. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get started. So this, this is a Lottie and Walter. So this is written and illustrated by Anna Walker. So in this book, Anna uses watercolors, which is one of my favorite mediums. As a painter, you can see, I mainly use oil paint, but I also love, um, I usually love using watercolors because it's a really light medium and it's if you make a mistake it's like super loose so that's one of my favorite um, mediums to use in the hospital when I paint with kids so as I read this book I'm gonna do it justice and try to show you pictures the best that I can all right so let's begin all right Lottie and Walter by Anna Walker <clears throat> Lottie had a secret. Her mom didn't know the secret, and neither did her baby brother. Hmm, I wonder what the secret is. Her swimming teacher definitely didn't know the secret. Only Lottie knew a shark was hiding in the swimming pool. Well, that sounds pretty scary. The shark didn't want to eat the other kids. Oh no. I don't know if I would want to go swimming. 
there was a shark in the pool. No, thank you. <laughs> it wanted to eat Lottie. Ooh. Oh no, that's huge. It's like Jaws. Each, each Saturday, Lottie went to swimming class. She watched, she waited, put her shoes back on and went home again. Mm -hmm. Every week was the same. It's sad. Morgan from the pool. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure if she went to camp, she would have a lot of help. Almost every week. Next Saturday is the pool party, said Lottie's mom. Would the shark be at the party? Lottie shivered. She looked down, down at the puddle under her flipper. Huh. I wonder what's there. And in the reflection, Lottie saw something looking back. Hmm, I wonder who it is. <gasps> that was the moment Walter arrived. Oh, he's very cute. Look at that guy. He looks so friendly. I don't want to swim next week, Lottie told Walter on the way home. See, they're walking home. Just a casual stroll home with Walter. That's right, Gil. There are no sh uh, sharks at camp. You're, you're correct. Only uh, weepy. Walter didn't answer. He was too busy singing. hum belly loo loop de -lee loo Lottie discovered that Walter liked books. Ooh. I think he likes some of the stuff that we like. And bubbles. But he didn't like shampoo in his eyes. Ugh, me either. I am not a fan. That stinks. When fish fingers were served for dinner, Walter ate them all. It turned out they were his favorite, just like Lottie. Sounds like a hog to me. <laughs> just kidding. That night, when Lottie was scared of the dark, Walter sang quietly. Hum belly loo, la dee da da. She fell asleep. That's sweet. And dreamed of sailing the high seas. That looks like a nice dream. Lottie was so busy during the week, she forgot all about the swimming pool. But on Friday, while playing hide and seek, she began to feel a bit queasy. Hmm. No one will find us here, Lottie whispered. They're hiding in the pantry closet. That's a good place to hide, because then you have all those snacks. But, Alas, they couldn't hide from Saturday. I'm not swimming, Lottie announced, and neither is Walter. Lottie didn't want, Lottie didn't want to be eaten. Me either. No, thank you. Everyone was enjoying the pool party. Her mother, her brother, the swimming teacher, the children, and the shark. Dun, dun, dun. Uh-oh. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Lottie listened to Walter. Lottie listened to the water lap and gurgle. Then, from deep in the shadows, she heard another sound. hum belly do. I wonder who it is. Can you see them? They're all swimming. Hi, Leslie. <laughs> she moved closer to the edge. Hum, Melly Lou. Lottie shuffled her flippers, looked down at the waves, and took a deep breath. Hum, Melly Lou. She jumped. Lottie had a new secret. There was no shark in the swimming pool. There were only children swimming and splashing. 
But now Lottie knew some were hiding and waiting for her. See? Who's waiting for? I think I know. It was Walter. Oh, look at that. Isn't that sweet? They're hanging out. And there's one more picture. What a guy. He is pretty great. He's so lovely. Oh, that was so sweet. See, it just took a little bit of bravery, courage, and a little bit of encouragement from your friend, and then you can do anything. So after I was reading this, um, I, I was like, oh my God, I love Walter. And then I was like, wait, I, I definitely have Walter's email and I have his cell phone. So I was like, I really, well, hold on. First, I have a question. Do you have a best or imaginary friend or someone that helps you overcome your obstacles? Anyone? So I have, well, I have a lot of, a lot of friends, but I have two best friends that are my sisters. So I didn't really have time to have an imaginary friend just because they were kind of always around. I'm a triplet. So when you're a triplet, there are three people basically who look exactly, you look exactly the same. So you're generally always together. So they were my best friends. I didn't really have time to have an imaginary friend. But alas, if I did, I think, you know, maybe it would be, it could be anyone. Julie, my friend Rob. Rob is pretty great. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. How about pets? I know my, I have a cat named Leo. He's pretty special. He kind of helps me do a lot of things that are scary. Michelle, her best friend Claire, her cats, Henry and Q. Yep, pets are always, I mean, who doesn't love a cat or a dog? Jordan. Oh, <laughs> Carly, you have three imaginary friends. Oh my goodness. Jeez, that's a lot of imaginary friends. You must have a lot of fun. Kyle, hi Kyle. Yeah, I'm a triplet. Go figure. It's a little hidden secret about me. So I always had two people around. Which, you know, when I was little, sometimes I got annoyed with them, but not really. Will and Emma. Oh, that's Bailey. That makes sense. You guys are like the, um, you guys are like the three musketeers. Bailey, Will, and Emma. <laughs> well, anywho, so I was saying, as I was kind of like thinking about, oh man, I really miss Walter. I remembered that I had his cell phone. So called him up. This is my phone. This is iPhone uh, 11, FYI with a really nice camera, I said, um, hey Walter, what's up? You know, I just read this book, you were in it, I really missed you. I was wondering, I know you're in the Arctic, do you wanna like, do you wanna come down to Philly and hang out? And he was like, sure, sure, I'll take a break from the cold weather. This was a couple weeks ago. So he came down and I was like, well, I gotta show, I mean, this, this is Walter. He's a famous walrus in a children's book. I have to show him a good time. So I decided to take him to all the, um, all the famous stomping grounds in Philly. So yes, Verizon Wireless does have plans for walruses. <laughs> it's, you can put a walrus on a family plan and it, it works great. <laughs> um, so the first place we went to, I was like, well, if he's coming here, he, Walter must know the movie Rocky. So we went to the art museum. So I don't know if you can see. This is Walter running at the art museum steps, shouting, you know, classic Adrian line. Um, yeah, cause like from, so most of you have probably seen the movie Rocky. So in Rocky, he's running at the steps and he gets to the top and he like pumps his fist and it's, you know, Sylvester Stallone, he's like so strong. Um, but with Walter, he's, he's kind of a bigger guy. So it was more of a, um, like a slow um, trot or blurp up the steps to, if that would make sense. Um, so it was like, you know, it took a while to get there, but we made it and 
you know, we chugged our raw eggs before to make sure that we had enough protein for the trip. And then, you know, once we got to the top, um, we had a soft pretzel, of course, because when in, when in Philly, you have to have a classic soft pretzel. So after we went to the art museum, I decided, well, let's go out. Well, I need to show them like a really fun night in the town. So I called up. I don't know if many of you know who Gritty is. Gritty is like a pretty awesome Flyers mascot. So I am also really good friends with Gritty. So I called Gritty up. I said, what up, Gritty? You want to hang out? And he was like, sure. He's furry. He's big. He has a lot of hair. Um, just like Walter. So we ended up going to the classic uh, Pat Steaks. Got some cheese steaks. Cheese whip. So if you're not from Philly, um, Pat's and Gino's are like the two famous cheese steak places in Philly and they're kind of like, one's here on Pashunk, the other one's here on Pashunk. They face each other. And I always get Pat's. I'm partial to Pat's. And so if you're not from here, the way to order a cheese steak is you have to say cheese wit, W-I-T. You never walk up and be like, hi, I want a cheese steak with, no, there's a certain way to order it. So I kind of taught Walter the ropes. We hung with Gritty. It was a wild night. Let me tell you that. Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> it was, you know, Gritty is a total wild card. Um, let's just say what happens in Philly stays in Philly. So, uh, yeah, it was a good time had by all. Um, so he was here for a couple days. So then we went to, uh, the next morning we like grabbed some coffee and I was like, what do you want to do? And he said, well, let's go see the Liberty Bell. Um, so we went and saw the Liberty Bell and I promise you, he did not put a crack in the bell. Um, it was there. I mean, I know that, I know he's big. So he did get a lot of looks when we came in like, oh man, this walrus is gonna put another crack in the bell but he didn't put a crack in the bell so yeah so this is walter uh dabbing in front of the bell and so for those of you who do not know the rich vocabulary of philly um john a philly john so a john is a person place or thing and so a john can be anything a john can be um this bottle bottle of glue <laughs> A John can be uh, this book. A John can be this cup of tea. You could say, oh my God, this, this John is so hot. Like it could literally, it could literally be anything. <laughs> could be this cup holder, whatever you want. So that's an education in, um, in Philly culture. So my question for you, another question um, is what do you like to do with your friends in your hometown? Like I know a lot of peeps are watching from like Boston and Connecticut, um, where else? New York, New Jersey. Um, I know that like in Boston, I've never been, which I should. Um, they have like a cool market, I think. Um, and like the baseball stadium, Eagle Stadium. Hoagie John, of course. <laughs> Hoagie's another uh, classic Philly word. I know the Danny, she used to live in Florida, one of our hop specialists, and she said she likes to walk along a river walk. I know in Philly, like a cool place to walk is along the Schuylkill. Um, play Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite's fun to play with your friends. Jeremiah, he likes to play uh, wiffle ball. Cool. I love wiffle ball. Morgan likes to explore parks and the yummy food, of course. Boston Market. <laughs> I don't think, I, I think that's like a different, I don't know the official name. Go to the park in the Connecticut River. Wow, a lot of fun things. Pearson Pond, of course. <laughs> South Jersey, of course, hanging in parks. There's like Prospect Park in Brooklyn. I used to go there all the time when I lived there. Oh, that's so nice. So hopefully when this is all done, we can eventually go to our favorite places and tear the city up. I know 
when this is all over, I'm going to bust out of my house. I'm going to like get 10 to 6. I'm going to get some readers on the way. I'm going to, uh, I don't know, go to Betsy Ross house. Cause why not? I'm going to do all the things I want to do. Oh, the love sign. <laughs> Cute. Cool. So it sounds like you guys have a lot of fun stuff planned for when this is over. All right. So next we are going, I figured now let's get down to arts and crafts. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little, little, um, Walter puppet. Cause I feel like it's only fair. I mean, I'm talking about him so much and it's not fair to hog him. So I'm going to allow you guys to make your own. So what you will need is we're going to need a brown and I know that uh, New York made monsters with brown paper bags. So we're going to make something else um, with a brown paper bag. Who knew it could be such a versatile craft. So we're going to need a brown paper bag. We are going to use um, any kind of paper you have around the house. I have construction paper and then I have fancy paper. Um, and then also you could use just a computer piece of paper for the eyes and the teeth. Um, and then glue and scissors. So if you have an adult with you, you can ask them to cut them out. But if you don't and you feel confident, feel free to cut them out yourself. So first I drew the eyes. So I used a stencil to draw the eyes and then I drew my teeth. Um, so while I'm cutting this out, I am gonna, so I was thinking, and since yesterday was Earth Day, I decided that we need to learn a little bit more of our Earth. So I'm gonna teach you guys some facts about walruses. So while I'm cutting this out, so you, you're not bored uh, watching me, I'm gonna tell you some facts. So first, Walruses are mammals. They are carnivores. And so when a walrus is grouped together, they're in a herd. So usually they can be in a herd of like, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of people. So I'm just cutting this out while I'm talking to you guys. Um, and they can be as big as seven to 11 feet. So that's like the size of a small car essentially. So that's huge. They can be 11, 1.5 tons, excuse me, 1.5 tons. So it's like the size of a six foot man, essentially. So uh, that's wild. Um, I would not want to be sat on by a walrus. I feel like that'd be uh, super uncomfortable. Probably pretty, like, I just don't think it would feel good. <laughs> um, and another cool fact, so I'm gonna have to read this because it's difficult to pronounce. So the walrus's scientific name is Odobemus rosmaris. So that's the Latin nickname. It comes from the Latin word and it means tooth walking seahorse, which is an insane nickname. Um, you know, I've been called a lot of nicknames in my life, B, uh, Bridge, but I've never been called a tooth walking seahorse, nor would I like that nickname. I don't know. Maybe, hopefully it'll never come to that where someone calls me a tooth walking seahorse. So the reason why they are called that is because they actually, which I didn't know, they use their um, teeth. So their teeth can grow up to three feet long. They actually don't use their teeth to eat. They use their teeth to essentially, um, <laughs> essentially walk on the ice. Sorry. <laughs> um, so they pierce. They pierce the ice with their teeth and then they like will pry themselves out of the water to like walk along the ice. So that's where they get their nickname. And also like another cool fact is, um, so they use their teeth to pierce holes in the ice as breathing holes. So when a walrus sleeps, if they're sleeping in water, they pierce two holes in the ice with their teeth and they essentially like make these breathing holes for them to breathe. So, which is pretty insane when you think about it, because I was thinking about like, you know, when I get ready for bed, I like put on my pajamas, maybe I'll have a cup of tea, uh, get my book out. I like pretty much make sure I have the right pillow, but I'm never looking for a breathing hole. So I just feel like that'd be very stressful if you were like, shoot, 
I forgot to brush my teeth, then I forgot to poke my breathing holes. I mean, that's insane. So kudos to um, Walruses for surviving. All right, so, <laughs> all right, so now we have these and we have our eyes. So next we are gonna make his mustache. So I'm just using um, like brown foam essentially. So the bigger the mustache, the funnier. So what we're gonna do is you can kind of like just draw it and then cut it out really however you want. It doesn't have to be uh, perfect. Um, but while I'm doing this, I'm gonna talk about how they eat. So a walrus's favorite food is shellfish. And I thought this was really cool. So they don't have great vision. So you know how a walrus has um, like a huge mustache? They also have these tiny little whiskers, not tiny, they're big, that like, you know, are on their face. And so these are called mustachial rebrisae. And so there are extremely, extremely sensitive detection devices. So these detection devices, um, like essentially when they dive in, they're like scoping the ocean floor, they can't really see. They use their whiskers to like sense where the food is. So they, the whiskers can sense where like the shellfish is. So they're basically using the whiskers to like find a snack essentially. It's like if they were on like snack alert at all moments. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. So I was wondering if you guys had um, crazy sensitive whiskers, which maybe some of you do, maybe some of you don't. Uh, what snack would you want to detect if you had all the powers in the world to detect anything? What would it be? Lobsters and scallops. Mmm, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it is a snack alert. You betcha. I mean, it's very important. Here's my mustache. So I'm gonna cut out his nose and then we'll start gluing stuff down. Pizza bagels. Yeah, man. Pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening. That song, right? <laughs> Your quarantine beard. That's true. I'm sure I've heard a lot of a lot of people have corn feta cheese. Yum. That sounds good. Tater tots. I'm with you, Jeremiah. That sounds really good. I mean, that'd be so cool if you could walk in your kitchen, open your cupboards. I mean, it'd be great for like, if you need a snack at night, you could open your cupboards and see what's there. Crunchy, oh, crunchy peanut butter. I like crunchy peanut butter. That's actually my peanut butter of choice. Mozzarella sticks. Camp breakfast sausage. Oh, Simone's right. <laughs> Those things are so addictive, so good, they're insane. All right, so a lot of good snacks, so I'm getting hungry. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna glue these down. So I'm gonna glue down my eyes. And then all we need to do, I'm gonna show you when I'm done. Don't worry. Um, and then after that, we just need to make the whiskers. New England clam chider. Oh, sweet potato fries. That sounds good. Whew. Now I'm getting hungry. Well, hopefully, I know that I've heard that a lot of people are baking now because there's so much time to bake. So hopefully after this, you guys can go bake some bread or something, but just make sure you mail me some or something like that. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All right, so I'm gluing down his mustache. And then we'll do the whiskers. So I don't know, I've never seen a walrus besides Walter in real life, but I feel like they would be really cool to see. Jersey corn, yeah. Put butter and salt on that. That all sounds good. All right, then we'll glue down his nose. <laughs> it's 
So another cool thing about walruses is because they're so blubbery, they stay, um, keeps them really warm because the Arctic is so cold um, that they'll stay really warm. So I'm gonna use this shiny, sparkly paper to make his whiskers because I want him make him uh, fancy because he may have a date later. We never know. I, have, I usually have no idea what Walter's up to. He's usually up to no good, but I'm gonna give him some shiny whiskers just in case. What's Jersey corn? Who asked that question? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. If you're not from around here, I guess maybe you wouldn't know. So another fun fact about walruses is they're very social animals. So rarely are they by themselves. They're usually in a group of like 100 to 200 people. So they always have a crew and they really like to hang out on ice. Um, so, and even though, and they're actually very graceful, which is kind of funny because, um, you know, they're such big guys, but when they, once they get in water, the National Geographic uh, website compared them to ballerinas. So that's something I thought was pretty funny, um, but I guess they're pretty graceful. So FYI, I got a lot of my information from National Geographic. I'm not this, you know, had a, just to say that source, which was very helpful in learning all my fun facts about walruses. Um, I just thought it was funny to imagine a walrus with a tutu in the ocean. I think that'd be pretty great. <laughs> All right, so now we're finishing up. And I don't know about you, but that was really fun. You ready? And here is the big reveal. Dun, dun, dun. There's your guy. Your new best friend in my opinion. In my opinion. He's pretty awesome. You can like throw him in your backpack when you have to go do something scary to give you some bravery, anything. You can like, you can bring him to the grocery store, anything you want. If you bring him to the grocery store, make sure you put a mask on him. Um, anyway, I had so much fun with you guys. Um, I hope that you had a blast with me. I hope you learned some new things about, you know, how to do things that are scary and then how to do things um, you know, with a buddy, because things are always easier with a buddy. Um, I hope you had fun hanging out with Walter. I know I did. Um, and now you learn something new. So you can teach your, your friends this craft, your nieces or nephews or whoever. Um, so mo more importantly, as we're speaking about friends, um, I want you to join my friend Rob tomorrow. So Rob is a very special friend who is doing, um, <laughs> Freestyle Friday. So I don't know what that entails, but I just know bring your tap shoes, bring, I don't know, a mug of hot chocolate, put a lot of sugar in it, and get ready. And because it's going to be a blast. So tune in tomorrow at 3 30 for Freestyle Friday with Rob. And thank you again for tuning in to uh, my little uh, show. All right. See you. Bye, everyone.